Welcome to St. Anne's, and a special welcome to all who are visitors and those watching from home. We are pleased that you have chosen to worship with us. In imitation of the Lord Jesus, we value and respect your life with all its personal backgrounds and richness and its physical and family uniqueness and all its beauty and all its beautiful variety. May you find a home in this faith community. Today we celebrate the second Sunday in Advent. Our Mass intention is for Dean Fowler. Our celebrant today is Father Robert, assisted by Deacon Bobby. Please stand and greet those around you with a hidden smile. Join us this morning as we sing this beautiful, simple song, Ready the Way, Ready the Way of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to listen to God speaking tenderly to us of the coming of the Lord and the fulfillment of his kingdom. Trusting in his kindness and the promise of salvation, let us prepare his way by transforming our ways so that we may receive Christ's body and blood with joyful hearts. Please come forward to light our two Advent candles. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, Emmanuel, you are the promised Messiah who brings light and life to your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, Emmanuel, you are the Redeemer who opens the way to salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Emmanuel, you will come again in glory to light lead us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, and the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up to a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm, here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord.
reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord. Because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements dissolved by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord.
We are in the second week of Advent, my brothers and sisters. As we continue to reflect on and prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord, today let's reflect on the significance of the second candle, which signifies and represents the Bethlehem candle, the way of faith and love. I don't know if you are aware when life is tough and uh, everything is very much challenging, all we need is the comfort, comforting words and tender loving care of our loved ones. We don't need people pontificating or dictating us. We don't need bosses, but we need leaders who will journey with us, consoling us and telling us, reassuring us that it's going to be okay. My brothers and sisters, by virtue of our baptism, we are proclaimers of God's kingdom. We are missionaries in our own respected, respective state of life. But sometimes, as human as we are, we forget or fail to really pass on the message of faith and love that we ourselves have received from the Lord. So as first point, let's think of this. Our faith gives us eternal life, and it is the substance of our hope that we reflected last week. But this faith has to be shared. The question is, how? All of us, in one way or another, try to evangelize people. But we need to learn how to evangelize in a more effective way. We heard in the first reading today that only with faith and love can we deliver God's message tenderly. God's message to his people through the prophet Isaiah was that they be comforted that they may find peace and security in him. And God will send a shepherd and a leader who will take care of them. My brothers and sisters, even in our own lives, every now and then we long for a leader who, like a shepherd, feeds his flock, gathers the lambs in his arms, and uh, carrying them in the bosom, and leading the ewes with care. My brothers and sisters, it's first point, let's remember, as evangelizers and proclaimers of God's kingdom, and the message of hope, faith, and love, let's be tender. Let's learn to evangelize using words that will comfort and heal. Don't worry. I don't know if you have realized there are many I have encountered who would come back to the church after being away for 20, 30 years, or who would be converted to our faith after attending our Catholic services. Sometimes funerals, sometimes weddings, sometimes baptisms, sometimes confirmations. Because they would say, I could feel in this community, in this parish, in this loving community, the welcome, the comfort, and the love during that celebration. So my brothers and sisters, Advent is time to prepare ourselves so that we may lead others to Christ. But we may lead others to Christ in a more effective way when we proclaim God's word with tenderness. I don't know if you notice, the church has become more pastoral and tender in proclaiming the good news, dialoguing, trying to negotiate, trying to seek the common good and common ground to bring people together. This is the message of the first reading. That's why God said, comfort my people, comfort. I'm gonna give you a leader. I'm gonna give you a shepherd who will take care of you. So at first point, my brothers and sisters, let's take extra effort in the second week of Advent to be more tender, to be more comforting in our words, in relationship with others, especially 
with our loved ones. Secondly, my brothers and sisters, we all are called to evangelize, but the question is, who can really evangelize? Who can really be effective proclaimers of God's kingdom? Today, St. Peter reminds us, those who live virtuous life are the ones capable of evangelizing. My brothers and sisters, we may be good in talking, but especially those who are not Catholic, those who don't belong to our group, or even children, look at us. The way we live our lives have more impact in their lives. That's why St. Peter reminds us in giving a moral exhortation for us to live a virtuous life. My brothers and sisters, virtues are the best way to live our lives in the most effective way to lead others to Christ. No matter what we do or say, if we, our lives doesn't reflect the virtues that we are called to live, it will not be that effective. Because virtues enable us to bring comfort and healing to others. Even listening or dialoguing with those we disagree, this is very challenging. Try to observe. People around the world look up to Catholics who are so different from anyone else, both morally and spiritually. And they all also know that being Catholic is both challenging and life-changing. They always ask, how do you guys live this kind of life? You know, it is very challenging, especially in countries and places where Catholicism is practiced by a very few people. So my brothers and sisters, we all have this challenge to become effective evangelizers. But St. Peter reminds us, especially in Advent, to change our ways of life, our words, thoughts, and our actions so that we may become role models. We may lead others to Christ by examples. There's a lot of power in the example we give to others, especially to our little ones, the lost, and the vulnerable of the society. My brothers and sisters, in this second week of Advent, let's build and live a virtue a day to lead others to Christ, especially lead them from corrupt and evil ways and bring comfort to those who, are, who eagerly await the Lord's coming, those who are afflicted. Sometimes within the church, they are lost, they are confused. Can we be? their true effective evangelizers because we ourselves receive this comforting message of Jesus, comfort my people, comfort. Third, my brothers and sisters, there's always the reason why we evangelize others. By living an exemplary life, that's the only way we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. So today's gospel is the fulfillment of the prophecy we heard in the first reading, God sending the forerunner of the Messiah, John the Baptist. He was sent to prepare the way of the Lord. He heralded the coming of the Messiah to the world. But there's one thing very significant about John the Baptist. He was a shepherd, he was a leader, living a simple, truthful, honest and straightforward life. There's nothing corrupt and evil in him. My brothers and sisters, we heard John the Baptist wore hair shirt symbolizing a garment of a prophet, a prophet who proclaims and prepares the coming of the Lord. So for our lessons and for our something we can practice in this second week of Advent. Let's remember that this message of the gospel crystallizes the necessity of repentance from our sinful ways and also the readiness of God to forgive us with his grace. St. Ambrose of Milan said, we need repentance 
Only when we repent, God's grace can be at work in us and God can wipe away and blot out everything we have committed, sins and corruptions, evils of any kind in our lives. And Advent is, my brothers and sisters, the time to live our virtues, the time to proclaim the good news, especially with tenderness and bringing comfort to those in need. In Advent, my brothers and sisters, we can pray to use the language of technology and the phones and computers to up upgrade the apps in our lives. There are a lot of updated and obsolete apps in our lives our profile message, our pictures, our lifestyles are no longer useful. But every day, especially in this second world Advent, we are called by the Lord to receive this grace of comfort and tenderness from the Lord. This year is also the year of grace the church proclaims. Let's uh, get this grace of God so that through us others may come to believe in him and as believers and lovers of God we will always do whatever is necessary for the safety, well-being and salvation of everyone beginning in our own homes sometimes our own family members struggle sometimes elderly, sick, sometimes teenagers or families raising little kids. Sometimes our own relatives maybe who have lost their jobs or lost their loved ones. This is the time, my brothers and sisters, that we accompany them, give them comfort but with tenderness and patience to journey together and prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah who is to come. So for our mantra, especially in this second week of Advent, we can say, come, O oh come, O oh come, Emmanuel, even while we drive. Or we can say, come, Lord Jesus, into my life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please all stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare our heart and lives for the day the Lord comes, let us call to mind our needs and the needs of the world around us. And our response is, Lord, transform your people. For the church, that she may faithfully prepare the way for the Lord's return in glory. We pray, Lord, transform your people. For politicians, diplomats, and peacekeepers, through their work, may justice, peace, and kindness, truth flourish throughout the world. We pray, Lord, transform your people. For the outcasts of our society, 
and all who lack freedom or feel entrapped by life, that they may experience hope and new freedom through God's presence and love. We pray, Lord, transform your people. That those chosen by Christ to prepare the way of the Lord as priests, deacons, brothers and sisters will answer his call. We pray, Lord, transform your people. May our own spiritual practices during these days of Advent fill us with anticipation of how God will act in new ways in our personal lives and in the world. We pray, Lord, transform your people. For all who are ill, that God will ease their pain, heal them and restore them to their communities of family and friends. And for all who are fighting the coronavirus, that God will strengthen caregivers and guide these seeking a cure. We pray especially for those in our community who have asked for our prayers. Jean Birding, Father Ray Codron, John Conboy, Mike Deschet, Morgan Dorley, Michael Gigande, Gordon Manning, Tom McCauley, Lake McCure, Mike Morgan, Saray Rosario, Bernie Virgil Virgilio, Barbara Yegar, Carla Morales, Peter Morales, Freddie Sanchez, and Cruz Sanchez. And we pray, Lord, transform your people. For all who have died, that the Good Shepherd will carry them into the peace and joy of God's presence forever. We pray especially for Peggy Adams, mother of Diane Adams, Leo Cucinato, friend of Laurel and Art Di Cesario, Andy King, husband of Tina, father of Daniel and Drew. We pray, Lord, Lord transform, transform your people. people. And for our Mass intention this morning, Dean Fowler. Lord, Lord hear our transformation, your people. your people. God of truth and kindness, with love and mercy, you call us forward on the path of transformation. Hear our prayers that we might answer your call with courage and live lives that proclaim your peace to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Awake to the day of the coming of 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the, for the praise, praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, we acclaim. Found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Bishop, Joel and Bernard, his auxiliaries, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, <coughs> hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, be with you. peace my brother. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. I don't want to say the word and my soul shall be healed. begin communion this morning, just a few reminders. Please follow your usher's directions. We'll be distributing communion by pew sections. If you choose not to receive, please still come forward for a blessing to prevent others from having to step over you in the pew. 
And as you approach for communion, remember to keep your masks on and to sanitize your hands at the stations provided. There is no rush, so please ensure your hands are dry before approaching the priest or minister. And finally, please step aside from the minister to consume the host, readjusting your mask before returning to your seat. For all those joining us online this morning, please pray the spiritual communion prayer with me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
The Feast of the Immaculate Conception, a holy day of obligation, will be celebrated this Tuesday at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. The Vigil Mass will be celebrated Monday night at 5.30 p.m., so please join us for that. The response for reservations for the Christmas Mass was tremendous. Seats sold out in minutes. We had more than if we had more volunteers, we could open more than 200 overflow seats. Father Ray asked that if you can volunteer to work in Mass, email Christina Hood, and you'll see her uh, email up there. And this is for ushers, okay? We need ushers to direct people on where to go in these uh, outlying uh, uh, Masses. Training will be provided. We hope you understand we must limit seating and take our health precautions in order to protect our community. Love of God comes first, and love of neighbor flows directly from that love. We'd like to thank our choir for uh, helping us sing praise to God better as always. Thank you so much. Thank you. We also thank our lecturers and ushers for the sacrifice and guidance. Thank you so much. We thank the presence of our children, little ones. I heard one of them one everywhere. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you for being so nice to others and those in Nolan Hall maybe and others and those watching online. And we also thank, continually thank our parents and grandparents for their guidance and examples in preaching the faith, proclaiming the good news to others. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. Please all stand. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace to love and to glorify our Lord. And thanks, thanks be, to, be God. to God. up 
the heavens. As always, we'll be dismissing rows from the back, and the center section goes out the center section. That makes sense. The side sections go out the side doors. The balcony, you guys can go out the exit doors if you like. Have a wonderful Sunday.